with job and you know and preoccupied about the couple's matter we had which we had it was fun. Alright? And uh, I have a bit of fun that's it. But nonetheless, we even know some kind of nothing we have been back. So nothing you have seen on the black black galley in the delta and when you stay at the of course. Christian Grey. In the book, 
Anastasia and Christian Gray have a conversation where he tells her a little bit about what happened to him in his childhood. He was a tormented soul. He is a man with many shades, and therefore it's called Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, may may uh, gray areas. Pwede mo tagalog ano? Wala for the last Jeff. May mga gray areas sa mga magkasawa. All right? Amen. Meron ako isi-share sa inyo ng mga gray area na pwede nyo binagay sa Valentine's card ninyo. Ayan. Wala. Na-virus ako dito nyo. Sabi dito, Learn to work the toilet seat. If it is up, put it down. Kasi ang sabi ng asawa ko, pag-iiya ko, put it up. Pag nakalimutan ko ibaba, nagagalit. <laughs> And to us, shopping is not a sport. Okay? And never that men will think of it as a sport. And when we have to go somewhere, Absolutely anything you wear is fine. Okay? And another one is ask for what you want. Let me be clear on this one. Subtle hints do not work for men. Strong hints do not work. And obvious hints does not work also. <laughs> We just say it. Because men are not mind readers. And unfortunately, I am guilty on this. I don't remember dates. That's why, thank God for our name. You know, nagbigyan ang kalendar sa akin. Sa amin, at nakamark na yung mga mukha namin sa mga araw niyo. Nakalimutan pa rin ang February 14th. And most guys own three pairs of shoes. Isn't it? Isn't it? Not siguro. I have ten, most probably, pero yung lima doon, hindi ko na ginagam kasi lumang-luma na. May kinasal pa ako. Ten, twelve years ago, kinasal kami. Nandun ka na sa matos ko pa rin hanggang ngayon. My wife, buti na naman na isawa ko dito. We bought a, yung yung kama, no? Na pag binuksan mong ganyan, okay? Oh, this is precious, so precious. Lahat ng sapatos ni Imelda Marcos nandun nakapagawa. Nakaayos, nakabox, isa-isa. Okay? So, at bawat kulay nun ay may kapagtay na kulay sa isusuot niya. Okay? Kung nag-identify ko lang, may man, may man, may man, hindi lang. Okay? And also, yes and no are perfectly acceptable answers to almost every question. Remember the in some studies that there are about 25,000 words that women can speak per day. All right? Do you remember that? And men can only speak around 10,000 words per day. So lo and behold, it is only equivalent to a 20-minute conversation per week for men. Yung, yung listening, attentive conversation talaga sa mag-asawa. All right? Pero may mga manager kami na alam ko hindi lang 25,000, they're about 50. Huh? Okay? So, come to me with a problem. Only if you want help solving it, that's what I do. And anything that I said six months ago is inadmissible in an argument. In fact, all comments become null and void after seven days. Okay? So kahit iungkatin mo pa yung two years ago na nangyari o six months ago, nakalimutan na ng lalaki yun. Okay? You can either ask me to do something or tell me how you want it done, not both. And whenever possible, please say whatever you have to say during commercials. Gitay ako dito. Huwag nanonood ka, tapos may itatanong sa'yo. 
Buti na lang mga UPC yung pwede nyo i-post kasi yan ang tatay mo. And when it comes to color, okay, to some men, peach is a fruit. Isn't it? So it, we don't have an idea what is a move, what is a fuchsia, you know? Pag kahit pa-spell ko sa akin ang fuchsia, hindi ko ano ang spelling ng fuchsia. Pink na lang. Pink I am not a mind reader and never will be. My lack of mind reading ability is not a proof of how little I care about you. And this is what I love, the last one. If I ask what is wrong and you say nothing, I will act like nothing is wrong. And if you don't, if you act like nothing is wrong, I tell you, I will be in trouble. All right? Though I, when I suggested that to my wife, you know, I don't think my attempt to clarify went over very well. And, and I come to realize that in marriage, sometimes gray is acceptable. All right? It's sometimes acceptable. You know, my examples are not going to say anything now. But this is a question. Is it acceptable in your walk with God? Are there gray areas that the Bible is not very clear on? And how can we be sure that a gray area is not actually a sin problem? And as you can see, some things people might consider gray. They might not apply, apply for you. For instance, dancing. Okay? To some people, dancing is a big no-no. Cannot. Right? But, you may have that strong viewpoint against some of these items, but you take a moment and mark that through these items that you feel that are wrong. And, uh, yeah, we go back. There you go. Okay. The Bible is very clear. If some things are wrong, they are wrong. All right? Let me give you a few examples. In Galatians 1, 6 to 9, it says here, I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there's some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ, because that is wrong. They were perverting the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you that, that you have received, let him be accursed. And in Colossians 3, 8 to 9, but now you also put all this. Ito yung mga, something's wrong in the Bible. It says anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Okay? Ito yung mga two. All right? Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. All right? And in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, <laughs> Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in past, in time past, that which they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Another one in Ephesians 5, 3, 4, but fornication and all uncleanness and or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving <coughs> of thanks. All right? So these are the black, area in the Bible. These are not gray. Now, let's talk about white. 
What is the wrong? What, what is the right way? Next slide. Ephesians and another one. Ephesians 4, 32 and be ye kind to one another. Ito yung mga right kind. These are the right ways. This is what the Bible says. Be kind to one another, tender hearted. Okay? Forgiving. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Okay? And also be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. And first Peter 122, seeing you have purified your souls and obey the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Right? So these are the right ways. They are not gray. No. There are a few things I would like to share with you based on what we have heard. There are a few things there that you may consider it right, wrong, or gray. But put it this way. These are the lists that I would like to show you. Okay? Is abortion right or wrong? Wrong. Is partying right or wrong? No. Gray. No. <laughs> gray. With gray. Gray. Okay? I was in a party last night. Okay? Pornography? No. Wrong. Divorce? Wrong. <laughs> Astrology? Wrong. Remarriage? Family? Not being baptized? Fornication, no. dancing, no. dirty jokes, no. fighting in wars, no. use of drugs, no. really? Or if you're sick? No. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Celebrating Halloween? No. Are you sure? No. Santa Claus? No. Great. No? No? Are you sure? <laughs> version of the Bible? You know the way there's some version of the Bible like NIV that they're wrong and some of the version is not wrong, you know, it's not right, blah blah, etc. Women preaching? Ah. <laughs> wrong? Wrong. So we'll not let Jerry's preach next week. <laughs> Tattoos? Wrong. Wrong. Black? White? Gray? Piercing? <laughs> Long hair on the man. <laughs> Short hair on a woman. Wearing of jewelry. Choice of lifestyle. Living together and not married. Smoking. Cussing. And cursing. Yeah. Gambling. Type of music. I rated movies, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Birth control. Green. Interracial marriages. Tobacco use. Little white line. Drinking. Drinking what? <laughs> Now, let me give you six principles for guiding Christians in the great areas of our lives. Number one, uh, before we go to, the, to that, we will read Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 23 and 15, 1 to 2. I'm sorry it's a bit long, but I think we will cover most of the principles that is that I'm going to share to you in the next 20 minutes. Hopefully I can finish this on time. It says in Romans 14, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. 
we have opinions and this is where the gray areas fall one person believes he may eat anything hindi po mga halal pork no while the weak person eats only vegetables let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats for God has welcomed him who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another it is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand one person stims one day as better than another while another stims all day alike each one should be fully convinced in his own mind that the one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord the one who eats eats in honor of the Lord since he give thanks to God while the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God for none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself correct for if we live we live to the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord so then whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's for to this end Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living why do you pass judgment on your brother or you why do you despise your brother for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God for it is written as I live says the Lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God so then each of us will give an account of himself to God we will give an account to God individually therefore let us not pass judgment on another any longer but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother i know and i am persuaded in the lord jesus that nothing is unclean in itself but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean for if your brother is grieved by what you eat you are no longer walking in love by what you eat do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is what I love. It's not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever that serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves, but whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. He, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves we are not pleasing ourselves let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up amen all right a bit long but uh, we'll give you these few things Number one of the six principles is, uh, am I fully convinced, okay? The key verse in this section is in 5b that says, let, let everyone be fully persuaded in his own mind, in his own mind. Before we come to the phrase in that verse, let's look at the verses preceding that verse. It says here, him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. For one no. believes that he may eat all things, another who is weak eats curse. Let not 
him that eats despise him that eats not, and let not him which eat not judge him that he eats, for God had received them. Okay? In this verse, okay, it is very clear from the context that Paul is addressing this to the believers. But it is also clear that there are two groups of believers. One are strong and the other one are weak believers. Mature believers and immature believers. And in Romans 15, 1, it points this out. Okay? The key point in this passage is that there is no room for both strong Christians and weak Christians in the church. I know this because of what it says in Romans 14, 1. Those that are weak in the faith, we are to receive. And listen to this. But we are not to argue with a believer who is immature in the faith over issues that are insignificant, that will likely do more harm than good. Okay? Because there are two things that they have mentioned here. It is eating everything or eating herbs. Is it celebrating holidays or not celebrating special holidays? So, the pressing question is which group was right? The answer is neither and both. Here's why, okay? There are, these two issues are neither doctrinal nor moral. It all has to do with why you are doing why what you are doing. Sorry. It has to do with why you are doing what you are doing. Doing. In Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not about meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let me explain this. If from your heart you purpose to honor God by observing a special day as holy unto the Lord, that glorifies the Lord. But if another Christian considers every day the same and lives as Christ's honoring life, that's fine by God as well. Turning to the issue of foods, if a Christian eats meat because he is totally convinced that the honor that it honors the Lord, that is acceptable. Yet the person who eats only vegetables, because for years he worshipped idols by sacrificing meat to those idols and eating and eating a portion of that offering, but now has turned to Christ and eats only vegetables to honor. The Lord, the Lord understands that also. Okay? Are you with me? Are you following? Amen. While this may seem confusing, confusing to some of us, including myself, but the point is this. It all comes down to motive. If your purpose is to glorify God, that is what matters. Amen. God receives both the believer who eats meat and the one who eats vegetables. The one who honors him on a special day and the one who honors him every day, okay? As verse 3 says, For God has received them, and God is able to make him stand. We do not have the exact gray areas to contend with today. There are many other matters of preference that Christians must deal with today. One believer may prefer one type or or style of clothing to another. As long as they are modest, okay? It does not matter. I remember when we were in uh, in San, we sang in uh, Kremlin. We didn't realize that we were actually the travelers. Oh dear God. <laughs> She was in front, and I tell you, she was wearing a miniskirt like a tutu. Uh, do you remember? And she was in front reading the Gospel of Christ, and she was like this. And let us read, you know. In the <laughs> okay? So what I'm trying to say is, okay? Just be modest, all right? And in, in, in some uh, churches, you know, they would say, you have to wear a tie. Before you, you know, when you are preaching, I don't wear a tie right now. So should I, should, should I step down and not preach because I don't wear a tie? Or it has to be white shirt and you know, it's black pants? 
You know, so it's just fine as long as your motive and as long as you are modest. There are some Christians who celebrate Christmas and others who do not because it's a pagan belief. Alright? And as long as those who, who celebrate it do so to glorify God, that's just fine. But it is equally acceptable not to celebrate it as well. There are some Christians who do not cook on Sunday. Every Sunday. And they do their cooking on Saturday. Sabbath day, you know. At hindi naglalaba, hindi rin naliligo, hindi rin naghihiso, ano yung hiso? To brush, hindi naghihiso. Their purpose is to honor the Lord on Sunday, but that's great. So, it's not about, you know, what they do. And who are we to pass judgment in them? Some Christians do not drink beverages and caffeine, while others do, because they say that caffeine is addictive. <clears throat> and as long as those who do are not addicted to it, I don't think that it matters one way or the other. The first point is clear enough. In the great areas, in matters that are neither doctrinal nor moral, be fully persuaded in your mind that what you are doing glorifies God and allow others the same freedom. Now, let's go to second principle. Am I doing this unto the Lord? He that regarded the day, regarded unto the Lord. And he that regarded not the day, do the Lord. To the Lord, he does not regard it. He that this verse, okay, presents a powerful statement against doing your own thing or the attitude that it's my own life, so I'm going to live it like I want to. In fact, if you are a believer, you are not your own. You belong to the Lord, and therefore, everything you do must please Him. Okay? Hindi uso dito yung me, me, me attitude, you know, I, me, and myself, or myself, me, and I. Too often, Christians defend questionable activities or habits in their lives to mask the pursuit of their own selfish pleasure. Ito yung, ito yung dogmatic type of behavior na tipo, pag-worship, kailangan akong taas ang kamay mo. At pagka nagpapalakpak ng mga tao, kailangan pumapalakpak ka rin. Dahil pag hindi ka pumalakpak, hindi ka nakakalugod. I attended, uh, my wife was really shocked with this, you know, we were in the Philippines in our church. But I'm not encouraging you to do the same, huh? We went to Batangas and we enjoyed the day and lo and behold, these are leaders of the church. My pastor friend and my best friend who is now a pastor and the leaders of the church went to Batangas and about to eat, attack. And my wife said, sweetheart, no, 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 Are we going to be condemned because they did not pray? If you did not pray for your food, will you be judged? But thank God if you are, you know, convicted that, you know, you really have to pray. There's no argument. But can we pass judgment on them that they did not pray? No. But can I tell you one thing? They are living their lives according to what? Righteousness? Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Because no matter how hard you try before you eat your meal, but there is no righteousness in your life, there is no joy in your life, there is no peace in your life, in the Holy Spirit, what good does it? Are you following? Yeah. And then we pass judgment on them that, no, sweetheart, they did not pray. They are not righteous. And I'll tell you, frankly, if this is the man who influenced 
your name is Mary Park Christian Walk. And he's the same pastor who married, who officiated our marriage in Ulilo. And he's the same man who is growing a big church in Matakina, who has now another branch in, in Baguio. So uh, am I saying that they are unrighteous because they did not pray? Before we pick, but I'm encouraging you to pray when you are about to eat food. Huh? I'm not saying to you now. No, no, because sometimes, like when I was in the Mater Hospital, I paused for a while, you know, during busy hour. I was still there at that time. Sat down, and I didn't realize somebody was observing me. I was about to eat my lunch. When I paused, you know, I just probably said, oh, thank you, Lord. He was, uh, he, he was amazed by what I've done, that I prayed before I what? And he saw that that was a Christian gesture. And he knew that I was a Christian. So I'm not saying to you now, pag nag-pray, hindi nag-pray. Should we pass Joshua? Alright? Now, whatever we do, you have to understand this, is to glorify God. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. There was a certain pastor who visited one of their members, and this member is suffering from lung cancer, or maybe asthma. Let's say asthma na lang. And the pastor observed that while you know he, she was in the house, he, she, he saw a ashtray at my cigarillo, no? Ang sabi ng babae sa kanya, ah, Pastor, pag, bago naman ako mag-smoke, yeah. yung kay pray ko. Sabah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> And then the so obviously the pastor has said, you know, I do not believe you can smoke to the glory of God, even if you pray over your cigarettes. <laughs> Kaya ay kakain ka ng mga matatabang mga nakataas ng cholesterol. Nakakataas ng blood pressure. Sasasabihin mo na, In Jesus name. In Jesus name, matanggal ang mga palas ko naman yan. Nakikita lang ako mo na, meron namang ano eh, gamot after that. So, whatever we do is to glorify God. And it is not about us. But it is for the Lord. Will, will the Lord be pleased? Uh, set aside mo muna yung, yung health natin eh, kasi health could be compromised at that point. So, the point is this, when it comes to that non-essentials, matters of preference or so-called gray areas, our focus must not be, I like doing this and the Bible does not prohibit it. So, I, am I going to do it? But am I doing this unto the Lord or will it glorify Him? Okay? Understanding also that no Christian lives to himself. If he does live to himself, he acts inconsistently with his character. We ought to consider ourselves under obligation to God in every action of our lives because after all, we are bought with a price. So you have to look after yourself. Alright? Number three. <clears throat> Um, number three is, will it stand against the test at the judgment seat? Why do you judge my brother or thy brother? Or why does you said, or why you, why do you despise your brother? For we, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. And we shall all give account of himself to God. Individual. Hindi isang buong family. Hindi isang buong church. We shall be facing God face to face in our personal relationship with Him. We are not dealing with black or white issues where the Bible gives us definitive direction. We are dealing with matters of preference or the so-called gray areas. Let me give you a good uh, illustration about this. There a, uh, a few years ago, there was a pastor in, in, uh, in, uh, in Ireland, in America, 
na bumili ng bagong Audi. Okay? A6, 136 BHP, you know? Vroom, vroom. <laughs> and uh, one of the members, okay, uh, uh, fully powered, you know, powered, everything is powerful, you know, and, and uh, uh, computer board, automatic gear packs, everything is automatic. Wow. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Iilaw na lang siya mag-isa niya, you know? Basta ako nakalagay sa automatic. Anyway, some people, you know, have criticized him, saying that a preacher shouldn't have a luxury car like that. <laughs> but the Bible does not tell us what kind of car we should drive. The kind of car you drive is a matter of preference. When it comes to preferences, it really does not matter if you have a different preference than someone else, provided it passes the test. In Romans 14, 10, 12, it is saying that don't criticize other Christians in the non-essentials. Jesus Christ will judge us all, and what will he judge? He will judge our service to him, that is our works, not our sins. The believer's sins have already been judged. Did you know that? Sabi ng Colossians 2.13, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ, for He has forgiven all of our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away and nailed it to the cross. He has already done that. And so, who are we to watch the past judgment on our brothers? Christ prayed, paid for them by shedding his own blood on the cross. My friends, if you are busy serving the Lord, you are not going to have the time to be concerned about what kind of car another Christian drives. Let me hear an amen to that. Amen. Okay? And you won't get an argument over what is the best curriculum in school or best school or what is best for your family. And you won't have to the time to argue if women should wear makeup or not. I believe that, you know, if a barn needs to be painted, you paint it. <laughs> And, and also, you will not have a discussion as to kung ano klaseng definition meron ng pastor ninyo. Kung yun ba yung curve na ganyan, o yung flat yun, o yung malakay na likwat. Because, <laughs> and it's not worth the effort to argue whether Christians should eat out on Sunday. These are the type of things that are preference issues. Instead of judging others in matters of preference, we would it be better to judge our own lives and be sure our works will pass the test of the seed of Christ. Amen. Is there righteousness? Is there peace? Is there joy in the Holy Ghost in your lives? Is righteousness seen in your lives? I'm gonna give you moments of being a bowel yan, he did not but Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. Is there righteousness in me? Is there holiness in my walk with God? Am I pleased? Is my testimony great? And if you are busy serving God, because you will just love the Lord. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15, I think I have to end with this. And I will just probably continue. But it says here, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it 
to life. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though as only as one escaping through the flames. It is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. This text gives us a glimpse into the workings of the bema or the judgment seat of Christ. If we make Jesus Christ our Lord of our lives and obey Him, then on only them will work. Sorry, then and only then will our works pass the test. And in John 2, 28, lastly, it reminds us, it says here, Now little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may, be, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Para pag dumating ang Panginoon, you know, hindi tayo mahihiya, dahil alam natin ang aming lakad sa Diyos ay malinang. Siguro, uh, just uh, five minutes. Three more. Ate, number four. Am I causing others to stumble? Let us not therefore judge one another anymore about just this, rather, that no man put a stumbling block, block on an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Minsan, baka naman naka stumble tayo dahil sa holiness attitude natin mas mabait ako mas magaling ako mas holy ang buhay ko kaysa sa iyo mag-ingat ka baka nagko-cos ka na ng stumbling block sa kapatid mo Panglima am I doing this by faith Ginagawa mo ba yung mga bagay na ito because of your faith? It is the utmost importance that you be right with God. If you have doubts in your mind about whether something is right, then just don't do it. You cannot live in joy and peace when your conscience is condemning you. Nararamdaman mo ba yan? Para yung feeling mo na napaka-righteous mo, pero meron condemnation sa puso mo. The Christian who engages in practices with a doubtful mind is condemning himself in those practices by his attitude. Again, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And lastly, am I pleasing myself or others? Nilalike mo lang balagi ang sarili mo pag nagpapost ka sa Facebook? Yung like ka lang ng like Para lang ma-please mo yung me, myself, and I. Kaya ka lang nagpo-point ng finger sa mga tao sa paligid mo. Kaya mo sila laging kinukorek dahil mali ang buhay nila. Ganun ba yun? Because in verse 1, it's very blunt. Okay? The mature believer lift up or support the weaker believer even it means sacrificing some of our own liberty in Christ. Don't belittle them or blast them, but seek to build them up in the faith. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Ano ba edification? For his strengthening the body of Christ. To edify one another. To encourage one another. To boost one another. That's exactly what Christ did. He bore our reproach. And this section concludes with this verse. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. You know, we should bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. In 1 Corinthians, lastly, in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, it says here, you can do anything Everything is uh, permissible, but not everything is good for you, or not everything is beneficial. 
I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. So how can we define those gray areas in our lives? How? By the six principles that I've shared to you this morning. And I hope, like what, uh, let me conclude this in the last uh, slide. See, uh, ano nga ba yan? Katalino mo nga ba yan pag ginawa mo? Sabi ni King Solomon in Ecclesiastes 2, 3, After much thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine. And while still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. In this way, I try to experience the only happiness most people find during their brief life on this world. I believe that King Solomon, who holds the title as the wisest man, the wisest man ever, who lived and wrote Ecclesiastes, but as he got older, he said he, he seemed to lose his wisdom. Where he refer, he refers to possibly a drinking problem, the corona drinking problem. See King Solomon. He hints at trying to find peace in a bottle of wine. He, ad he admits his attempt at gaining wisdom was actually foolishness. So, kahit pa maging pinaka matalino ka, or kahit pa sa kapapoint mo ng fingers mo, or kalalight mo, kung ano may para masatisfy mo na yung sarili mo, this is my question to you. Will it bring righteousness in your life? Is your testimony far better than it was before when you have learned about these things? Is your joy in serving God much higher in a scale of 10? It is 10.9 or it could be 15 even more because your joy in serving God is far better? Is there Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit working in your life? Now before you point those fingers to your brothers and sisters, Ask that to yourself first. All right? Let us all stand in this prayer. Dear God, when you said in your word that the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking, or it is not about ourselves, but it is about righteousness, peace, and joy. And the Holy Ghost. Lord, we confess to you that some points of our lives we probably are guilty of that. Passing judgments on others. Lord, right now, we want to say, Lord, we want to be careful of our testimony. We want to be careful of the righteousness, not self-righteousness, but the righteousness that is depending on the word of God. And this is what we do, Lord. And we will journey with you as we serve you in this church, as we worship with you in this church, in this family, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you may that we may focus in evangelizing this world. Because this world, this darkened world, is getting sicker and sicker. And there are thousands and thousands of lost souls outside this building who happens to need a Christ and Lord let our lives be a testimony let our lives be a vessel of of, of, of your word of your blessing be a vessel that is willing to work for the common goal and that is to become one of the laborer of Christ because the harvest is full, Lord. And I ask that we may have one common purpose and one goal in doing that. To reach out to those who are lost. And let them know that Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. And this is what we are going to focus on, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.